The reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at a couple TikToks today and talk about them. And my voice is going to be just a little raspy because I have a sore throat. I've always heard that it's the fast food, that it's the diet Cokes, that kind of thing, that is the instigator. Is that true? So I think we have to look at the different causes of obesity as a big pie. And that's one factor. But notice how I'm using this part of the pie, right? But the number one cause of obesity is genetics. This does not mean what Tess thinks it does. She's stitching this video like it's proof that there's some gene we've identified that turns obesity on or off. But to start, this doctor saying genetics is the number one factor is misleading per her own work, where she positions diet and exercise as the first line of defense against obesity. There are gene expressions that affect a person's metabolism by way of satiety and hunger cues, but in no way does this mean that you become Tess Holiday size without overeating. That means if you are born to parents that have obesity, you have a 50 to 85% likelihood of having the disease yourself. Families pass on lifestyle and diet as well as genetics. And our diet is a well-known influence on our genetic expression. I heard a phrase recently, genetics may load the gun, but it's lifestyle and diet that are pulling the trigger. And that's a pretty good way to explain epigenetics, which is the study of how our behaviors and environment affect the way our genes work. But Dr. Fatima goes on to say that even with all lifestyle factors controlled, obesity would still persist through genetics. Even with optimal diet, exercise, sleep management, stress management. I'm not a doctor, but I honestly can't find anything to support this. And even in her own work, she claims that obesity is a preventable disease that people are dying from unnecessarily. In one of her published studies, Dr. Stanford found that most medical schools don't teach that obesity is a disease, and in fact, don't even offer courses on it, even though it's the second leading cause of preventable death in the country after smoking. So I'm not sure what Tess is getting from all this. She's making these faces like, finally, an expert is saying what she's been saying. But this is not what Tess Holliday has been saying. Wait, are you saying that doctors don't understand obesity doctors? Doctors do not understand obesity. Dr. Fatima is actually quoted as understanding obesity as a brain disease, with the underlying issue being what a person's brain is telling their body it needs. I mean, every way we slice this, it's coming back to lifestyle factors, and that should be good news. It's weird that Tess feels so empowered to hear that she has no agency over her own health. And ultimately, this entire segment was an advertisement for a weight loss drug that most people can't afford. And even the drug requires that you eat within a normal calorie range and exercise. I've been talking about Ozempic lately. I know you have. You know, I was on that before it was trending. And just as a little side note here, Remy Batter, a plus-size TikTok influencer, was just quoted in an interview as saying she actually gained twice her weight back when getting off of Ozempic. So it doesn't work when you get off of it. I gained double the weight back after. Which is the drug being shilled here as the cure to obesity. But it doesn't actually treat the underlying cause of obesity, which in Remy's case is binge eating. Later got into the bad binging and went off it. And she admits to that, which puts her way above Tess Holiday for me. Actually, do you know this? 79 to 90% of physicians in the United States have significant bias towards individuals that are heavier. Now, doctors listening to me may say, oh, it's not me. Hold your horses, because has that patient come to you and told you, look, doc, I'm eating well. Look, doc, I'm exercising. And the doc says to them, are you sure? I don't believe that that's really what you're doing. I'm not defending medical bias. It affects everyone, not just overweight people. So it's definitely something we have to continue to work on. But I am going to argue that all self-reported data is susceptible to bias as well. And part of what makes obesity unique to study and treat is how behavioral it is. She's acting like nobody has ever walked into the doctor's office and lied about their lifestyle. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? And again, you can look at Tessa's face and tell how much she's loving this, even though I'm still not sure why. Half of this community thinks obese should be considered a slur, but for today, thanks to 60 Minutes, it's convenient for it to be a disease that nobody has control over except for this new miracle weight loss drug. Reality just tends to bend around whatever point fat acceptance is trying to make in the moment, 
And because of that, a lot of fat activism clashes with itself even. How much people fucking hate fat people? They just hate them. Like there's like this weird hatred that's, it feels almost akin to racism. I hate it here! This is not like racism, it is racism. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness. Dude, what are you talking about? You sound insane. The statement she just made was incredibly racist, and I hope I'm not the only one who hears that. She just equated fatness to blackness, and then quite literally conflated anti-fat bias with racism. And she did it without batting an eye. Like, this is just understood. The reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people. Appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness, especially black women. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. I try to keep things balanced on here, but this is insane. And the more she talks, the worse it gets. You're just making things worse. She's not advocating effectively for anybody here. She's doing the opposite. She's diminishing the experience of an entire race while also caricaturizing them. And she's thrown a wrench into the actual conversation around fat shaming. So who's actually benefiting from this terrible take? And the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness. It all comes back to white supremacy, which is the foundation of the fabric of America and rules every sector and aspect of our society. This whole idea comes from the book Fearing the Black Body by Sabrina Strings. And if you go through this comment section, it's pretty much split between people who know that this is nuts and people who read the same book that she did. And those people want to recommend that book to the non-believers. I'm someone who's actually motivated to find redeeming qualities in fat acceptance ideology, but every time I hear this comparison made, I feel the respect leaving my body. Goodbye! But when will I see you again? Oh, never! We're going to call it here for today. Thank you so much for watching the video and making it all the way to the end if you're still here with me. Let me know your thoughts down below and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps my channel. I really hope everyone is doing well and taking care. I'll have another video up soon. If you caught my last video, then you know I'm moving, so this month is going to be a little weird on here, but we'll be back on track soon. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.